Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name's Jeff Ferris. Welcome to my shop. Today, we're going to take a closer look at Woodpecker's box clamps, and I want to show you something that I've done in my shop to make these even easier to use. Before we get started, though, I'd like to ask you to hit the subscription button and the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our videos right when they come out. And if you like what you see today, be sure and give us a thumbs up. Okay, let's get started. So I came up with this idea on how to make the box clamps uh, always perpendicular to each other when we start putting a box together. And I wanted to do this on my assembly table. So yesterday, I routed two tracks in my table that are perfectly square to each other. Then I took some of Woodpecker's T-Track, cut it up to fit into the grooves, and screwed it into my top. The box clamps are drilled with three holes in the base. The idea being you can screw it down to a bench top in a permanent location. I really didn't want them to be permanent though, so that's why I went with T-Tracks in my table. Now I have track nuts on the back side here, and we're gonna use those so these can now travel in the tracks that I've inlaid into the table. So I just line up the T-nuts with the track. So while this one is traveling back and forth, it's always in line with the one that is located at the corner. So we're gonna take the other one and we'll bring this down from the other side. Now, this one's in line here, and these three are always a perfect square with each other. So before I start explaining what's going on with the track system, let's go over some of the fundamentals of the box clamp. Uh, this clamp is uh, very specific in what it tries to do. What it's gonna do is hold two pieces of stock perpendicular to each other. It isn't going to put pressure against a joint. It's just gonna hold the two pieces perpendicular to each other. And it does that by using a wedge, all right? We have the fixed wedge at the back, the movable wedge at the front. And so as you tighten down this screw, it's pushing this wedge down the ramp and closer to the stock. So the range of adjustment is somewhat limited uh, so we have to be a little bit careful when we're setting this up to get it where we want it to be. Uh, we're going to take a look at how to set it up to something where you don't know the dimension. But if you have something that is a stock dimension, there are marks to give you a target for your setup. Now, if I'm doing stock that is uh, three-quarter inch milled material, so I know it's right at three-quarter, I want my back block right on the three quarter inch. And you can see these little tracks in here, those actually have teeth on the underside of that block that are gonna bite into those grooves, okay? So right on three quarter for milled stock, if I'm doing 23 30 seconds plywood, that means plywood that comes out of a mill in the United States, I wanna be one notch ahead of that. And if I'm doing 18 inch Baltic birch plywood, I wanna be in the next notch forward of that. Okay, so it just gives you a little bit more adjustment if you pay attention to where you are relative to the three quarter. We're also gonna take a look a little bit later at doing material of two different thicknesses, and then we'd go one more step forward from that if we're doing half and three quarter. The first sample that I'm gonna show you is Baltic birch plywood. So I am one, two notches forward of the three quarter inch mark. And then we're gonna lock up the fixed block. Now I'm gonna put the moving block against that. And you'll notice that I've got the block centered on the bolt. That'll give us an opening that's just a little less than three quarters of an inch on both sides of the clamp. So another thing we want to do when we're getting ready to, to put something in the clamps is you want to release this bolt so that the moving wedge 
is let's say about a quarter of an inch above the fixed wedge. And the fixed wedge should be in the correct notch and locked. Moving wedge about a quarter of an inch above with lots of play up and down. So now we're going to take the first piece of our box and we're going to put it in here and then we're going to slide this one up and slide it in. Now this is square so if I were doing this just loose on the table it could be going all over the place. In the track system I've got everything lined up. So I swap places with John and his camera so that you can see inside the box while we're working. Next, we're gonna take one of the long sides and do the same thing. We're gonna slip it into the corner and then we're gonna adjust the tracked adjustable box clamp until it's about where it needs to be. So you can see the corner doesn't quite come together. On the outside of the box, I'm trying to make everything flush by hand. When I get it fairly close, I'm going to come in and start tightening down the wedge. Now you can see that as the wedge goes down, it's forcing the corner into alignment. So for our other short board, we have the floater that goes in the middle of the table. I'm going to take this piece, slide it in there, in our table floater, and that gets this side roughly positioned. Now we're back over on the other side of the table again. I've dropped in the fourth side and I'm gonna take this box clamp, slide it up until that just touches, slide this one up until that corner is just right, then we'll slide this over, and we'll have our four corners roughly aligned. I've got a little tension on this fixed corner clamp, and I'm just a little bit short of being flush. So since this is locked down to the table, I'm just gonna tap the board with a mallet until that's dead flush. And then we're gonna cinch that one down pretty tight. Now with the first corner fixed, we're gonna work around the box, tightening each corner and bringing it flush. On the first corner here, our, board, our long board is just a little bit past the sideboard and there's a little gap. So the first thing I'm gonna do is nudge the, the gap together, and then I'm gonna push the long board until it feels flush. Now we've got it close. We're gonna put a little pressure on the clamp. Not tight yet, just a little bit of pressure. Then that opened the gap up a little bit because it's getting close to being square. So I'm gonna take a mallet, I'm going to come on the box clamp, I'm going to give that a little nudge, and a little nudge this way. You can see that gap close up, and now we'll tighten up the clamp. So you can see down by the clamp, the joint's perfectly flush in both directions, but up at the top we've got a little bit of a gap. That's just a little spring in the material. You can see I can actually close that with just my fingers. Now we'll put a box clamp on the top of this at the end and close up any gaps that we have around the top. Now we'll do the same thing to the other two corners. Now we're ready to put on the top clamps. So this is exactly the same clamp that we used underneath, uh, but instead of having the Allen wrench where you come in from the top, now we have a knob that comes in from the other side. Now when you buy these, it comes with both sets of hardware so you can do it either way. And when we have that set up, we'll just drop it onto the corner. Put a little pressure on it and do the same routine. Tap the joint together. Make sure it's flush both directions. 
and lock it up. Now we'll work our way around the box on the top. So our box looks perfect. Every joint lines up great. Let's talk a little bit about what we did to make that happen. The clamps didn't do it. Sorry. They're great. I love them, but they aren't going to pull a bad joint together. This stock was cut to where the opposing sides were exactly the same length and all four ends were perfectly square. If your stock's prepared right, the clamps are going to make a beautiful box. So in this first example, all four sides were exactly the same thickness. What if we want the ends to be half inch thick instead of three quarter? So let's convert this so that we can do two different thicknesses of stock at the same time. I'm going to take our top clamps off. Loosen the bottom clamps. We can have up to a quarter of an inch difference between one side and the other that's meeting in the joint. So we're right where we want to be matching half inch into a corner with three quarter. To adjust this for an offset joint, we want to move our fixed block in a little bit tighter so that it's about halfway between three quarter and half inch on our scale. Maybe just a little bit closer to the half one notch closer to half than exactly in the center. And we'll do both sides. Now, you can see that there's a slot on the wedge and that allows you to create that offset. Now that we have that in there, as you tighten it up, you'll notice that the block is no longer centered. It's offset to take up the difference in the material thickness. Now we'll just tap it into alignment. And lock it down. Get the other side. Then we'll do the same thing with our top clamps. Adjust the position of the fixed wedge. Drop it on the corner. And tighten it up. Tap it into position. Perfectly installed with an offset corner. So the box clamp is really good at keeping everything square, but it isn't pulling the joint together. Now, it doesn't matter what you're doing with this, you have full access. If we want to use clamps, let's say we have a dado joint in there, we can put our clamps on and actually put pressure on the joint. If you're using fasteners, you have full access all the way down to the bottom to put in screws, pins, dowels, whatever you're using. Another nice feature of the box clamps, if you have classic joinery like dovetails or finger joints, we often leave these fingers just a little bit long so that we're sanding just the ends instead of sanding the side to match. So with those slightly long fingers, if you put that in a traditional clamp, very often you'll have a problem because it'll clamp against the stock instead of pulling the joint together. But with the box clamps, you have full clearance for that joint to get out of its own way. I think I'm going to love the T-Track embedded into my outfeed table. Uh, not just for working with the box clamps to keep those perfectly square, but also for things like our knuckle clamps and other hold downs that I can now use along the front and end of my bench. Hey folks, I hope you enjoyed today's show. 
If you did, be sure and give us a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, be sure and hit the subscription button and the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our videos right when they come out. I thank you so much for watching today with Deep Dive. We'll see you next time.